We're now going to embark on the 17th century in Italy and Spain. Now, traditionally European art of the 17th century is termed Baroque. This is, in fact, a pejorative term, meaning that the art is somehow uncouth, or at least not as good as the Renaissance. And I'll get into that in a minute, but first I want to give you some history, some ideas and events that are going on at the time that are going to inform the art that we're going to see. First of all, the popes and the papacy at this time are still concerned about the rise of Protestantism. And that's not surprising. They had had control of pretty much all of Europe under the Christian umbrella for the better part of 1500 years. Of course, they're going to want that power back. But we're going to see certain things take place. For example, the Treaty of Westphalia in 1648 will allow for religious freedom in the German state. Some of the places where we've seen the most intense fighting between Catholic and Protestant forces. And much of the aim of Italian art at the time is going to be to restore Catholic prominence. They're going to use art to do that because it's felt that that will inflame the passions of the viewer and draw them back into the church. Therefore, much of the work that we're going to see is going to be didactic. In other words, intended to teach. Generally something with a moral lesson. You could imagine, for example, a priest pointing to these pieces during their sermon. And in terms of architecture and sculpture, we're going to see Pope Sixtus V determined to return Rome to a position of prominence and really showcase the church's power. Now, you have to understand, when we were in the Renaissance, Rome at the beginning of the Renaissance is really a goat pasture. The Tiber River had flooded numerous times. No one's really cleaning it up. And so much of what had been the Roman Forum, parts of the Colosseum, etc., are going to be under mud. And people are going to start digging that out and rebuilding the city of Rome itself, trying to bring it to prominence. Now, of course, Sixtus V, very interesting name, but his interest is really in power rather than Rome itself. He wants to recreate Rome, something that we've seen in numerous other quote-unquote barbarian groups that take over Rome or take over parts of Europe. They're constantly trying to recreate the glories of Rome. In his case, he wants to do that, placing the papacy at the center, thus bringing power to the papacy and power to himself. 